house is costing us a fortune. Great men must live in great houses, Leon. It will be when the young man is finished with it. Thank you for coming, Helen. Thank you. <laughs> you know me, Captain. Just waiting for the call. Uh, have some wine. I have a speech to make. Then I'll show you to your room. Very good. Hello, Betty. Thank you. Give me a minute. Ah, the year. A ship of beauty. <laughs> you didn't think so up north. That night the captain said we'd have to abandon her. Remember? He gave us an hour to pack our necessaries. It's late. Won't you go to bed? I walked into Lynch's cabin. Is it? He's sitting Time on the you floor. were in your bed too. The Must have him and All his belongings all over the room. Said he didn't want the misery of picking what to leave and cursing the boat in five languages. I counted. Forty-three pairs of socks. A man can't cook if his feet are cold. <laughs> All done. I'm so sorry it wasn't quite perfect for the warming, Mr. Amundsen. Come and sit down. Gentlemen, this is Jürgen Stubru, our local carpenter. Over here. He is responsible for everything you see. The best carpenter in Norway. <laughs> He is in his suit because he was invited as a guest, and he brought his tools because he is in love with perfection. <laughs> this is Helmut Hansen. This is nice Adolf speech. Lindström, both with me on the Northwest nice Passage. This is Fritz Sapfer, an old friend, nice and my brother Leon, you know. Hello. Hello. To your health, my friend. It's an honor, gentlemen. Well, I have to be getting back quite soon. I don't know where the... Oh, yes. Yes. Gentlemen, it won't surprise anyone here to learn that I have plans. This is in confidence, of course. It's not for your morning paper, and it's not for our neighbors. Some work has already been done. My brother, Leon, has been acting as a business manager for half a year. But there are still difficulties ahead of us. I want you, Adolf, and you, Helmer, to know them now, because the longer the notice, the better the chance that you will agree to accompany me. The great nail. Exactly. Hmm. I said it would be the North Pole. My wife said it would be the moon, knowing you. It won't be easy. When? A year, maybe less. In the Jura? No, Jura was sold to pay the debts on the Northwest Passage. What then? The Fram. You have the Fram. Well? I'm in. As what, Captain? Ice pilot, driver. I get 80 at the customs house. I give you 120. A hundred? No. Good. I speak with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you more tomorrow, gentlemen, and I'll need to ask for some help when the time comes, Fritz, in the matter of publicity. But I can say after tonight, that we are most certainly on our way. More aquavit, Master Carpenter? Mm, I must get to my home, thank you. Mm. Good night, Sibiru. Good, Good, Good night. Good night. I'm, uh, I'm honored by your trust. Uh, this room. Yes. Sir, if you find you have need of a young lad with a bit of use in his hands and happy to use them, I'd be more than ready to go. Thank you. I remember that. Good night. Right. 
Mother will be down directly, Miss Bruce. These days she sleeps a great deal. Would you sit down? Thank you. Are you Grace or Kitty? Grace. I hope we'll be friends, Grace. Perhaps you'll call me Kathleen. This is to be Lady Waterley's wedding dress. Oh, it's very, very handsome. She's been engaged to be married for almost five years. But the order for the trousseau comes barely a month before the ceremony. Still, beggars can't be choosers. Miss Bruce. Mother has always had a very special place in Con's life. She's 67 now and growing frail. Whatever you decide to do in the future, I hope you will respect the bond between them, not seek to snap it. Miss Scott, I am principally here to give your mother that very reassurance. I'm not even sure if I can cope with being his wife. I certainly have no desire to become his mother. Write and tell me, at once, please, that you shall go to the pole. What's the use of having energy and enterprise if a little thing like that can't be done? Master Day! Master Day! Progress with the motors remains minimal. There's always some other problem or other setting us back. Yesterday it was the cold, today the throttle. Skelton's list grows daily, and with De Walden arriving tonight to inspect his investment, I fear only the worst. Oh, why aren't you here? Captain Scott. Good evening. I've kept you waiting. No, no. I'm sorry. I have to rest after that dreadful journey. Waiter. Escargot, de Vaux. Miss Bruce is not dining with us. Miss Bruce didn't come, sir. Really? She told me only last week that she was certain to come. I thought so, too. Uh, I'll have the uh, melon and the uh, haddock. The haddock, yes. I think I have spinach too. Yeah, spinach too. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The uh, tests so far have been very satisfactory. I think you'll be amazed how well she performs. Good. Yes. I have some confidence motor traction may well prove the key to the entire journey. And you may rest assured that your uh, benefaction will be and be attested to in my subsequent account of the expedition. Even so, in fairness, I ought to point out that the original estimate for development and manufacture may well require some revision upwards by perhaps a considerable sum. I know the cost of the work to date has been burdensome. Uh, if we say it, please. Thank you, sir. However, I do feel... Captain Scott, I don't know what would constitute a considerable sum in your scale of things. However, I am reliably informed by the gutter press that I earn from ground rent alone in the city of London more than a quarter of a million pounds per annum, or as they quaintly put it, 685 pounds a day. Now, in my scale of things, the cost of your entire expedition would not remotely constitute a considerable sum. Perhaps we should wait for the results of the test before discussing money. By all means.
Did you hear about Shackleton? Hmm? Reported landed at McMurdo. All going well and according to plan. The Nimrod's back in New Zealand. Here, see for yourself. No, I haven't heard. Didn't I hear somewhere that you've made an agreement with him not to use McMurdo? I don't see how, Lord Walton, to preserve purely private arrangements.